We want to believe that there are shortcuts to success. We want to believe uh, we can take a drug or we can do something that'll make it quick and easy. But the truth is, it takes grit. It takes persistence. So it's hard to understand what could happen to you in 10 years in a visceral gut way of what it means to have failed in life. Um, and to me, failure in life is not not having money. It's not realizing your potential. You're 60 years old and you said, I could have been this and I never did it. That's like the worst thought I think anybody can have. And you don't think about it in the moment because your life is okay. But you've got to wake up and understand that there's an urgency here. And that if you're not practicing something now, if you're not aware, if you don't have a path towards something better, you're rotting on the vine. And, and that day of reckoning will come at some point and it will be painful. You're not going to feel it suddenly. It'll be slow, but it'll come and it won't be good. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. You know exactly, it's, it's not a magic trick. There's nothing I talk about in that book that's a magic trick. It's all back down to a very primitive mindset of we just have to do. It's like breathing. Breathing becomes normal. Like, we don't even know that, that, that we're doing it. That's how you have to live your life. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you got to break yourself off. The amount of mental pain of how many times you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. It's going to be, it, it, there's going to be more times you do something that, that you don't want to do than you are going to want to do it. And that's, that, that's your new norm. That's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. If a person doesn't like his income, all he has to do is take a good long look at his service. Look where you will, you will find this law in undeviating operation. Our rewards will always be in exact proportion to our service. This is the law then that lies as the supporting structure of economics and personal well-being. So fix it in your mind. All attempts to sidestep or in any way avoid this law will result in frustration and failure. So this brings up the question, if what I want is more than I now have, how can I increase my service in order to earn it? The failure of most people to live successfully is not caused by their lack of abilities, far from it, but rather in their failure to decide what it is they want and understanding that our wants are governed by our talents and abilities and that we are divided into two groups of roughly 5% and 95% and that it's the 5% group which is successful. So here, let me give you a definition of success which to my mind covers the subject completely. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. That is, anyone who knows where he is going in life is a success. At the moment he makes the decision of what it is he intends to accomplish, of what it is he considers a worthy ideal, he is successful. Oftentimes people go, okay, here's really what I want to do, and this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And then, they see all these other things that other people are doing and then they, they kind of see that as like a grab bag. And they're like, I don't want a little of this and a little of this and a little of this and I want it all at the same time. And that's not really possible, you know? You can't play five sports at the same time. You gotta pick one, you gotta specialize. Maybe you can do two, but you probably can't do five, right? Number one is that you need to really get amped up about why that goal matters to you. Because once you know why the goal matters, that's going to be that thing that gives you meaning and purpose, that turns into a passion, that allows you to show up and keep doing it when you're bored. What would you like to do? If you don't like what you're doing and you don't like where you are and you don't like your relationships and you don't like X, Y, or Z, what do you want? What do you like? 
And then you gotta be able to add passion to it to activate that thing and make that dream a reality. And to find that meaning and to develop it, to create meaning in our lives, we have to set an intention and we have to pursue that intention. Start small, know what you want, get out of bed, get after it, set rules for yourself, follow those rules. You have to understand that you're not your own servant, so to speak, you're someone that you have to negotiate with and you're someone that you want to present the opportunity of having a good life to. And that's hard for people because they don't like themselves very much. Once you discover your purpose, it's your job to live with passion. That's when you're passionate. That's when you're ready to go to that next level. You determine your legacy. It's up to you. Your legacy is in your hands as long as you can breathe, as long as you can hear, as long as you can see. If you're passionate and driven and focused in what you do, if you're really good at it, people will take notice. That's basically it. So those dreams and goals that some of you have that may seem larger than life, good. That's what I want you to go after. And don't let the fear of the failure, don't let the fear of perfection hold you back. You won't be perfect. You will make mistakes. But I promise you this, you're never going to know if you can sink or if you can swim unless you jump in the water. So continue to fight for it. Continue to believe in yourself. Hold on to the possibilities. Get away from the negativity. Push yourself, believe in yourself, and go as far as you can. Now is the time for you to step up, stand out, and become the person you need to become. Your future is in your hands, and this is what sets your life up to be worth the potential that you deserve. Your power is and always has been the thing that's going to take you towards the life that you have earned. There is a direct relationship between the level of clarity you have about who you are and what you want and virtually everything you accomplish in life. Superior men and women invest the time necessary to develop absolute clarity about themselves and what they really want, like designing a detailed blueprint for a building before they begin construction. Average people just throw themselves at life like a dog chasing a passing car and wonder why they never seem to catch anything or keep anything worthwhile. Make your goals personal. Intense burning desire is absolutely essential to the overcoming of obstacles and the achieving of great goals. For your desire to be intense enough, your goals must be purely personal. They must be goals that you choose for yourself rather than goals that someone else wants for you or that you want to achieve to please someone in your life. In goal setting, for the process to be effective, you must be perfectly selfish about what is that you really, really want for yourself. This doesn't mean that you cannot do things for other people, either at home or at work. This simply means that in setting goals for your life, you start with yourself and work forward. The great question. One of the most important questions in goal setting is this. What do I really want to do with my life? If you could do or be or have anything at all in life, what would it be? Remember, you can't hit a target you can't see. You should return to this question over and over again in the months and years ahead. What do I really want to do with my life? In determining your true goals, you start with your vision, your values, and your ideals. When you begin, these will often feel a bit like fantasies detached from reality. However, now your job is to make them concrete, like designing a dream house on paper. Decide what you really want. You start with your general goals and then move to more specific goals. One, what are your three most important goals in your business and career right now? Two, what are your three most important financial goals right now? Three, what are your three most important family or relationship goals? right now. Four, what are your three most important health and fitness goals right now? Identify your major worries. The flip side of the above questions is for you to ask, what are my three biggest worries or concerns in life right now? What bothers you, worries you, concerns you, and preoccupies you in your day-day life? What aggravates or irritates you? 
What is robbing you of happiness more than anything else? As a friend of mine often asks, where does it hurt? Once you have identified your biggest problems, worries or concerns, ask yourself, one, what are the ideal solutions to each of these problems? Two, how could I eliminate these problems or worries immediately? Three, what is the fastest and most direct way to solve this problem? A great thinking tool. In 1142, William of Ockham, a British philosopher proposed a method of problem solving that has come to be referred to as Ockham's razor. This way of thinking has become famous and popular throughout the ages. What Ockham said was that the simplest and most direct solution requiring the fewest number of steps is usually the correct solution to any problem. Many people make the mistake of over complicating goals and problems. But the more complicated the solution, the less likely it is ever to be implemented and the longer the time it will take to get any results. Your aim should be to simplify the solution and go directly to the goal as quickly as possible. No fear of failure. Here is another question to help you clarify your true goals. What have you always wanted to do but been afraid to attempt? When you look around your world and you look at other people who are doing things that you admire, what have you always wanted to do as well, but you have been afraid of taking the chance? Have you wanted to start your own business? Have you wanted to run for public office? Have you wanted to embark on a new career? What have you always wanted to do, but been afraid to attempt? Do what you love to do. In setting goals for your life, short and long term, you should continually ask yourself, what do I most enjoy doing in each area of my life? For instance, if you could do just one thing all day long in your work, what would it be? What sort of work or activity gives you the greatest joy and satisfaction? The psychologist Abraham Maslow identified what he called peak experiences. Those moments or times when the individual feels the happiest, most elated and exhilarated. One of your aims in life is to enjoy as many peak experiences as possible. You achieve this by thinking back and identifying those moments of peak experience in your past. And by then, by imagining how you could repeat them in your present and future. What have been your happiest moments in life up to now? How could you have more of those moments in the future? What do you really love to do? You encounter a plethora of ideas every day, but most of them probably go by unnoticed. That's why you need to develop the ability to absorb. Be like a sponge. Don't miss anything. Don't miss the words. Don't miss the atmosphere. Don't miss the color. Don't miss the scenario. Don't miss what's going on. Most people are just trying to get through the day. Here's what I want you to be committed to doing. Learn to get from the day. Learn from it. Let the day teach you. Attend the University of Life. What a difference that will make in your future. Commit yourself to learning. Commit yourself to absorbing. I've got a personal friend who is gifted in this area. I think he soaks up and remembers virtually everything that has ever happened to him. He can tell you vivid stories from his teenage years, where he was, what he did, what he said, what she said, how they felt, the color of the sky, and what was going on that day. And the reason is that he absorbs everything that happens to him. I'm telling you, it's more exciting to have him go to Acapulco and tell you about it than it is to go yourself. He has an extraordinary gift. Wherever he is, he doesn't miss anything. Here's a good phrase for you to jot down. Wherever you are, be there. Be there to absorb it. Take a picture if you can. Take pictures in your mind. Let your soul and heart take pictures. Get it, capture it, absorb it, and don't be casual in getting it. Casualness leads to casualties. Next, learn to respond. Responding means letting life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. Let sad things make you sad. Let happy things make you happy. Let the feelings strike you. Our emotions need to be as acknowledged as our intellect. It's important to know how to feel. It's important to know how to respond. 
It's important to let life in, to let it touch you. I'm the greatest guy in the world to take to the movies. I really get into a good movie. I want it to make me laugh, make me cry, scare me to death, teach me something, take me high, take me low. I just don't want the movie to leave me as I was when I came in. That's what we all need, to have life touch us. And that's exactly what will happen to you when you develop the ability to absorb and respond to all life has to offer.